Zira can have all the grape juice plus. I'll take the liquid bread plus. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Continuing my Planet of the Apes review series, today I'm going to be talking about the third film in the franchise, 1971's sci-fi sequel, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content, like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Escape from the Planet of the Apes stars Kim Hunter, Roddy McDowell, and Bradford Dillman, and was directed by Don Taylor. Set immediately after Beneath the Planet of the Apes, it tells the story of Zira and Cornelius as they flee through time and find themselves in 1970s Los Angeles. Most of the time, films within a franchise will end in a way that sets up for the next movie. Sometimes we get a glimpse of where the story's going, while other times things are just left open, so there are a lot of possibilities. Occasionally, you'll run across a franchise installment that leaves you questioning where the series could go from there. And in most cases, the answer is nowhere. It's usually the final movie that wraps everything up and shuts down the possibility of a sequel. Well, Beneath the Planet of the Apes was one of those types of movies, making this follow-up film among the unlikeliest of sequels out there. Like Planet of the Apes before it, Beneath the Planet of the Apes was a financial success, so the decision to make a third film was an obvious one. But exactly how to make a third one? Not so obvious. Without spoiling the specifics of anything, let's just say that some plot-based decisions in Beneath the Planet of the Apes had made it impossible to move forward with the story. So how did we end up with the sequel? Not by moving forward, but rather by moving backwards. More than a rehash, more than a mere reversal, Escape from the Planet of the Apes is an inversion. This time, Zira, Cornelius, and another apenaut journey to the past, traveling to Taylor's time, to our time, ending up in then modern day Los Angeles. Now, I realize that this premise might initially sound a bit uninspired. It might sound like an idea born of pure desperation and a convoluted workaround to keep the franchise going. I concede that there's a bit of unlikely overconvenience to get us to the start of this film, but this movie, in and of itself, is actually surprisingly good. Like its immediate predecessor, Escape from the Planet of the Apes has a plot that's pretty evenly split into two parts, but this time, those two sections of the film flow a bit more naturally and serve as tonal counterbalances to one another. The first half of this film focuses on the arrival of the Apenauts. Following a brilliant cold opening, we watch as the advanced future apes find themselves in the advanced human-dominated past. Understandably, both the chimps and humans are startled and confused by this, but unlike the action-intensive and threat-filled equivalent story stage in the first Planet of the Apes movie, things are comparatively calm and entertaining here. There are certainly some tense moments, but there's also plenty of humor. As usual, Zira and Cornelius contribute most of this, and Kim Hunter and Roddy McDowell continue to deliver wonderful performances and chemistry. This first half of the movie is quite funny, really leaning into the fish-out-of-water storyline in a fun way. In fact, with its bouncy music and playful montages featuring Zira and Cornelius exploring LA, it almost feels like some sort of goofy, offbeat sitcom at times. But around the halfway point of the film, the story and tone begin to shift dramatically. This sense of foreboding and genuine threat begin to creep in, and after learning something about Zira's condition, this ominous feeling starts to manifest much more dangerously. The fish-out-of-water fun is very quickly replaced with frustrating, targeted interrogation and politically driven committee decisions. It's hard to watch, because we know and like these characters. We know they're good people. Apes. So seeing the tables turn so quickly on them, and watching them go through the things that they go through is rough. Things take a grim turn during the second half of the film, and in classic Planet of the Apes fashion, the movie ends up transitioning into something incredibly bleak, leaving the audience with a stunned, gut-punched feeling that couldn't be any further from the feeling the film gave only an hour before. As with all the films in the original Planet of the Apes series, Escape from the Planet of the Apes packs quite the thematic punch. 
Since the story has made its way to present day Earth, the allegorical nature of the story gets toned down quite a bit, but that doesn't make this any less impactful. This movie still touches on themes of classism, racism, and nuclear war, like the previous two films, and it also adds a little environmentalism into the mix, but it turns its focus more to two other thought-provoking concepts. The first is the very nature of hypocrisy, as we see humans seeking to condemn the apes for things they themselves are guilty of. It's interesting, because it takes the allegorical role-reversed themes of the first film, but makes the characters aware of them too, rather than just the audience. Zira has to grapple with the guilt of what she used to do to humans in the name of science, while the humans, in turn, have to decide if this is any different from what they currently do to animals. And more importantly, if Zira and Cornelius should be treated as though they're humans or lesser animals. And that ties into the second introduced concept, which is one of ethics and willingness. It essentially asks, how far would you go in order to ensure the safety of the distant future? What would you be willing to do? What morals would you be willing to compromise if you thought it could maybe make a positive difference? Basically, do we as humans, at the expense of somebody or something else, have the right to alter a future that is itself an uncertainty? With its big tonal shift, this film covers a lot of ground. Some of it's a little familiar for the franchise, but most of it feels refreshing, especially after Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Escape from the Planet of the Apes is not nearly as action-packed as those first two movies, but it doubles down on the thematic impact and, quite literally, brings the story home. With a budget only one-third that of the originals, the lack of ape extras and futuristic sets was a big help here, so the makeup for the three lead ape characters saw a return to their usual quality. This is a movie that really hinges on these apes. It absolutely relies on the likability of Zira and Cornelius. These are two characters we already enjoy and have grown to know and love over the course of the franchise. They're very sympathetic characters, and by the time we get to this third movie, we're invested in them. So obviously, we're rooting for them. We naturally take their side every step of the way throughout this film. And this introduces something kind of interesting into the mix. This film's villain, or probably more appropriately antagonist, certainly goes about doing things in less than reasonable ways, but his logic and reasoning is actually understandable to a certain extent. He's not just some evil mustache-twirling villain who inexplicably hates monkeys. He's trying to do what he truly thinks is necessary, which makes the whole thing all the more thought-provoking and impactful. In a wild way, Escape from the Planet of the Apes is a sequel that ends up being sort of a backdoor prequel, a self-prophesizing full-circle inversion of the franchise. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is definitely Zira and Cornelius. I know I'm starting to sound a bit like a broken record here with these chimps popping up in the pros every time, but they're really good and easily the best characters the original series, and maybe the entire franchise, have to offer. After a disappointingly limited role in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, not only are Zira and Cornelius back, but they're the main characters. No Taylor, no Brent, this is absolutely their story, and they bring all the humor, chemistry, and impact we've come to expect from them. Kim Hunter is as great as ever as Zira, somehow managing to increase her eye expressiveness here, and Roddy McDowell returns from his brief franchise absence to reprise the role of Cornelius with equal parts humor and gravitas. The second pro has got to be the premise. I know it might sound eye-rollingly overconvenient at first, and like a desperate stretch to keep the franchise going after Beneath the Planet of the Apes, but the resulting story is actually really interesting. Planet of the Apes presented us with an allegorical role-reversed world in which intelligent apes ruled the planet. Taking a group of these apes through time and putting them in the modern-day human ruled world isn't just a reversal of this idea, but an entire inversion of it. It's got some conceptual similarities to the first film, but this is far from just a rehash of the story, instead expanding on the ideas and themes to give us something entirely new. On the con side, my only real issue is a pretty minor one, and it's the pacing, specifically towards the end of the second act. This is right around the time, maybe a little bit after, the film transitions from fun fish out of water comedy to the grim interrogation stuff. Even though it's a bit sudden and stark, I don't mind the tonal transition itself. 
It's just that everything slows down a little too much through the section. It stays compelling, because we're invested in Zira and Cornelius, but it does feel long through this part of the story, and things don't get particularly exciting again until the final few minutes. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Escape from the Planet of the Apes or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Escape from the Planet of the Apes three and a half out of five paws. This was always my favorite of the original series sequels, but I have to say I liked it even more with this recent rewatch. So this is a high three and a half, and I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually becomes a four for me. You have to get past a few illogicalities to start with, but this movie offers a really interesting inversion of the Planet of the Apes story delivering thought-provoking themes and a franchise best focus on Zira and Cornelius. I would recommend Escape from the Planet of the Apes to anybody who liked the original Planet of the Apes movie. This film is technically one that could stand on its own, but the story and characterization from that first film is really helpful when coming into this film. This movie certainly switches things up a bit and is less of a sci-fi adventure than the original movie, so there will definitely be some franchise fans who don't enjoy this one, but if you're looking for a worthwhile sequel and don't feel like wading through all of them, this is probably going to be your best bet from the original series. If you liked Escape from the Planet of the Apes, I would recommend Time After Time. This is another interesting 70s sci-fi time travel story that manages to nicely balance its fish-out-of-water fun with a thrilling race against time. Rather than a spaceship, author H.G. Wells uses a time machine of his own construction to chase after Jack the Ripper, with both men traveling from 1890s London to 1970s San Francisco. If you want another thought-provoking sci-fi film, you should check out The Day the Earth Stood Still. This is a thematically packed story about an alien sent to warn the people of Earth about the consequences of their nuclear proliferation and current destructive path. It's a film full of human paranoia and explores moral relativism in a fairly profound way. And if you'd prefer something outside of the sci-fi genre, you might want to watch Magnum Force. This second film in Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry film series takes the premise and many ideas of the first film and reverses them, giving us a non-rehashed story that's pretty different. This one still features plenty of action and many quotable lines, and like Escape from the Planet of the Apes, has an important final scene aboard an abandoned ship. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Escape from the Planet of the Apes? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie featuring non-human astronauts? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies the way life should be.